Lots of activity in Parshas Kedesh. Every Pasuk or two is a whole new world. So in the 19th chapter, which is the second reading of Parshas Kedesh, we have a number of laws that govern interpersonal relationship. So for example, we start off by talking about the concept of justice and that there shouldn't be corruption as in the person. And then after that, we talk about the concept of tail-bearing. And we talk about the responsibility that we have towards each other. We go on to talk about the prohibition of hate and the responsibility we have to find ways to positively influence those around us. And in verse 18, the Torah begins with the words, Loisikem, Veloisiter, you shall not You shall not exact vengeance or payment from somebody. Retribution. Payback. Getting even with somebody. And what they means they shouldn't even bear a grudge. As B'nai Amecha, the members of your family, the members of your nation. And the Torah here presents those famous five words. V'yahavta l'reacha komecha. You must love your fellow as yourself. Ani Hashem, I am God. So let's take a look at Rashi. Leisikim, the first half of the Pasuk. You shall not get even. So what's the difference in Nekoma? What is Nekoma? What is Natira? So Rashi gives us simple examples. Omar a person says, Hashileni magolecha. Can you please loan me your sickle? Omar Lehi says to him, Love. Nothing to it. The Machar, the very next morning, he has a need now to borrow something. Amar Lehi says, Hashileni Kardumcha. Can I borrow your axe, your hatchet, hoe? Amar Lehi says to him, Eni Mashilcha, I'm not going to loan it to you. Why not? Kederech Shalei Shaltani. You didn't do for me, I won't do for you is the most natural kind of behavior. Most people do to others the way they've been treated by them. So if you were bad to me, I'm bad to you. The Torah prohibits this. It's the right thing to do, not because somebody was nice to me. It's the right thing to do because it is the right thing to do. So if that's what Nekoma is, what is Natira? A Zohi Natira. Omar Lai, here Rashi once again metaphorizes and he gives us a simple example. Hashileni eskar dumcha. The person says, please, can you loan me your sickle? Amalai, pardon me, your hoe, your hatchet. Amalai, he says, laugh. Lamachar, tomorrow, the next day, Amalai, hashileni magolcha. Loan me your sickle, Amalai. Hey, lach, here, go right ahead. Eini kemeischa. I'm not like you. Shalei shaltani. I remember very well you didn't do what I asked yesterday. I didn't forget that. But I'm not like that. Go ahead. You be stingy. You be mean. I'm not like that. You did that. I won't do that. I am going to be the mentioned the right thing. But I, I kept the grudge. I didn't forget. And I reminded you I didn't forget. So Rashi says, this is Natira. Why is it called Natira? So Natira comes from the term, the terminology of guarding or watching. Shanoiter Eva, that the person guards or keeps the anger, the hatred, believe in his heart. Even though he doesn't exactly get even, he doesn't do the same thing, but nonetheless, he doesn't forget about it either. It may not cause him to do the final act, but it certainly contributes. It's part of the picture. That's not a good thing. So this is very much part of the nitty-gritty of everyday life. The Torah speaks to the petty side of human nature. And the fact that we generally, even if we're nice people, will treat others the way they treat us. And the Torah says, no, that's not how you should treat others. You treat others the way Hashem wants you to treat them. Not because you're not nice to them because they're nice to you. You should be nice to them because Hashem says to be nice to you or to them. And whether they do or don't do this is their business. That's between them and God. And what you do is between you and God. And don't confuse the two. You aren't nice to somebody because they're nice to you. You're, you treat your fellow properly because Hashem says treat your fellow properly. Okay. 
So that's not only I'm not allowed to hate somebody else, I have to do for somebody else because that's the right thing to do. And here the Torah concludes and says, We are half to You have to love your fellow as yourself. Says Rashi. We are half to love your fellow as yourself. Omar Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva said, Ze klal gadol batayda. This is a great rule or principle in the entire Torah. So, if somebody wants to fulfill the Torah properly, then the ahafta, l'reacha kamecha, is a very key and important part of it. Now, it's interesting, Rashi doesn't go into the details. He doesn't say, what does it mean, the ahafta, l'reacha kamecha? If you look at Ramban, Ramban says that the mitzvah is that you should love your fellow in everything, the same way you love yourself. We all have self love, we care about ourselves. That's how we should treat a fellow. Same level of self-love. Self-self-love, love of somebody else. Same thing. There should be no difference whatsoever. It's interesting that Rashi in Mesech Sanhedrin, the end of chapter 4, he translates this. He says, what does this mean, this love business? Is it a mitzvah in the heart? Is it about actually feeling love? He says it means that the Jewish people were told that they should do towards others that which they want done to themselves. So you should do. It's not a love, it's not a heart, it's not an emotional mitzvah. It's not speaking to how I should feel. It's a mitzvah that speaks to what I should do. What should I do? The way you would want to be done to you. That's what you should do to somebody else. It's an action-oriented mitzvah. So Rashi doesn't say it's about love. Rashi doesn't say it's about an emotion in the Gemara. He explains it. This is very much something that should inform our actions. Why doesn't Rashi say that here? Doesn't doesn't breathe a word of it here. You know, the Rambam in Hechazdeus puts it this way. He says, you should always speak positively about another. In other words, the Torah already told me not to speak slanderously. Do I have to speak positively? Would you like somebody to speak positively about you? Then that's how you should speak about somebody else. But Rashi here, instead of explaining, he simply says, Amr Rabbi Akiva, Zerklal Gadol Batayra. And that begs the question. Why does not Rashi explain and clarify the meaning of the Yahafta Lareacha Kamecha? So we're in a rush, we're going to go straight to the Biyuri Achomesh on page Reisha and Chesim and Yud of Parshish Kadeshim. The Rebbe asks exactly this question Why did Rashi bring this teaching of the Gemara? That there is not within it, it seems, Seemingly, Rashi's comment does not necessarily inform or explain or clarify or elucidate the meaning of the scripture. It just doesn't. Ramban explains the meaning of the scripture. Rashi himself in Mesech Sanhedrin explains the practical implications of the scripture. Here, Rashi doesn't say anything. He just quotes a Maimar Chazal. Okay, so what if Rabbi Kiva said it's a Klag how, how, how does that explain how I do this? So the Rebbe suggests that by quoting this Maima Chazal, Rashi answers not one, but two questions. Two questions which would naturally rise when a person, when especially a child, reads this verse, two questions will come up. And Rashi, in one fell swoop, answered both of those questions. What are the two questions? So question number one is if you're being realistic and honest with yourself. Ketzad nitan l'tzavas ala adam she'ev adam how could you command somebody to love somebody else? How could you command them? You don't love them. I don't love them. And not just command them to love them, but I command somebody to love somebody else, and I command them not just to love him, you should love him the way you love yourself. It's It's actually the polar opposite of human nature. The survival instinct is the strongest single instinct of any of our instincts, and we have lots of them. By far, the survival instinct is the strongest. Why? Because human, na- human beings, by nature, are prone to be self-preservationists, to care about themselves. That's human nature. Human nature is that it's avas asma. We love ourselves. Love doesn't mean you have to hug yourself or fawn over yourself. Love means that that's what you're concerned with. That's what you're worried about. You are the object of your own concern. You are the major object of your own anxieties and worries. You will tend to always be lenient on yourself. You'll tend always to gloss over your faults. 
to emphasize your strong points and de-emphasize your weak points. That's, that's who we are by nature. And here the Torah comes along and says, you feel like that? Feel like that towards somebody else. You say, but that, that, they're not me. I didn't have to work at feeling like that about myself. That came naturally. Incidentally, Ramban, after he goes on and says that the Torah is expecting you to actually love somebody like you love yourself, Ramban himself says, A person's heart cannot accept this. It's not within the realm of our human emotions to love somebody else the way we love ourselves. It's just not. It's not, it's, it's not possible. It, it, it can't be done. So this is a natural question. The child's going to learn and the child knows that when there's one candy, he wants the candy. And he doesn't want to share it as much as he wants it himself. If there's one fire truck in the room and the kids are fighting over the, playing the fire truck, the child knows that he wants the fire truck and he doesn't want somebody else to have it as badly as he wants it. A child understands that. It's, it's common sense. So how could the Torah say something which is so uncommon sense? Number two, why is there a need for mitzvahs that tell us about how we're supposed to feel to somebody else when most of these mitzvahs that tell us what we're supposed to do have already been enumerated? As she said, don't do to others as you would want done to yourself. That's what Rashi explains in the Gemara. But we already talked about this. For example, in yesterday's reading, we talked about Leisignevu. Don't take something that belongs to somebody else. Would you like somebody to take something that belongs to you? Certainly not. Don't take something that belongs to somebody else. Very simple. Lay sigzel. You want to grab things, you like when people grab things away from you? Don't grab it from somebody else. Lay sigzel. Don't go around bearing tales. So oh, I have a juicy lush and hard, I, well, some real good gossip about this guy. Hey, would you like that you be the subject of gossip? Definitely not. Then don't do it about somebody else. Lay sigzel. Don't hate him. Would you like to be hated? If you don't want to be hated, don't hate somebody else. Lysikum, we just learned the prohibition of exacting revenge, getting, pay, getting, getting, getting payback. There's no revenge is not a Jewish thing. If now I have a mitzvah that comes along in the second half of chapter of, of verse 18, it says, I have to love my fellow as myself. So then why do I have to have all these other mitzvahs? Why do I have to have Lysik Neivu and Lysik Zil and Lysik Lechrochel and Lysisna? If I love somebody, Obviously, I wouldn't take what he, what, what's his because I wouldn't want somebody to take what's mine. Obviously, I wouldn't grab away what's his. Would I, grab, would I want somebody to grab something that's mine? It's self-understood that I wouldn't go around speaking badly about him because I wouldn't want that with regard to myself. Of course, I wouldn't hate him. I don't hate myself. Would I get revenge on myself? If I myself know I did something wrong and now I have to ask somebody for a favor and I know I wasn't nice to that person, do I say, serves your right. Don't you dare go and ask now. So, but I need it. Tough luck. You should get revenge on yourself. You didn't have it when you needed it, and now and you didn't help them. They shouldn't help you. And person comes along and says, "I'd like to help you." So no, no, I don't want you to help me. Why not? Because I'm trying to get revenge on myself now. Because I didn't help you, so I want you not to help me to teach me a lesson. Smack me hard. Who does that? It's self-understood. So if I have to love somebody like I love myself, why do I have to need, I have these details for? Why does I have to enumerate things? Kedei liyashiv kushiselu. To answer questions exactly like this. Hey, Rashi is the Rebbe Kiva. Rashi brings the words of Rebbe Kiva. That this mitzvah of loving your fellow as yourself is kalal. It's a rule. What was your question? Your question, why do you need this detail? And that deal to the other detail. If after all, that will be included in via hafta rechamecha. And the answer is, via hafta rechamecha is the kalal. It's the rule. And the rule always includes the details. So it doesn't mean that if I have to do this mitzvah specifically, I don't need details. I do need details because this mitzvah is a klal. This mitzvah is the great general rule. And the great general rule will necessarily include many details. So those are the details. The mitzvah of loving your fellow as yourself, in other words, it's not a mitzvah that self, uh, stands by itself. It's not a mitzvah that supports itself. That actually addresses the feelings in the heart in the way Ramban speaks. Ella, rather. It's a rule. It is a general rule that includes many details. In other words, this mitzvah is the mitzvah that includes all the mitzvahs 
that govern interpersonal relationships. All the mitzvahs that are relevant for bin Adam Lachavede are now rolled up into one. Here's the klal, here's the rule. Once I know I understand that there are many details. The Torah will now spell out the details of how this is done, but this is the rule. And the rule will have details. Now, this answers both of the different kinds of questions. Mitzvah what was the question? I don't have any love. I command you to love. I don't love. You can command me to behave nicely. You can insist that I, that I, that I behave in a, in a manner which is in keeping with what's right and decent and good. Can I command me to love? Elamai. What are we saying here? We're not talking about love as the Ramban says. We're talking instead about something which has expression in the real world. Here's what I'm going to do not how I'm going to feel. Even though via hafta sounds like you should feel, what Rashi is telling us is a klal gadol. It's a great rule of what I do. And, and, and how does this via hafta lech kamecha get done? Oh, how does it get done? It gets done. When I keep all the mitzvahs that govern how I treat others. That's how it gets done. Yeah, but wait, what about the feelings? Rashi says on a simple level, on pshutah shal it's not about feelings. It's what I should be doing. What should I be doing? The pratim, the details. Therefore, the Torah gives all the details of mitzvahs, which are interpersonal, which govern how we treat others. The Torah gives us rules. The Torah gives us the general rules, pardon me, general principles. And the Torah explains it. There's a lot of klal of prat in the Torah. There's a lot of general principles. And then you haven't broken down into the details. So once I say this, all the questions fall away. The question is, how can I love somebody else the way you love yourself? I don't know. You don't have to. That's what I have to do. I have to treat others the way they treat what I want to be treated. What does that mean practically? Practically, here's, here's the details. Follow all these mitzvahs. And you follow all these mitzvahs just the way you would want done to yourself. The second kind of question was, what, what is the point of this mitzvah? Don't we have all those other details? If we have those details... So, why don't we just say the klal? Say the rule, and then we don't have to say the details. And the answer is no. The klal, the general rule, is articulated as kind of a roundup on all the details. But the details are the things I have to do in order to fulfill this mitzvah of the ahafta, the achkamecha. And that, my dear friends, is the simple perspective on the love that Hashem expects from us as we deal with others. Because it's like, it's like if you have a question, you're not sure, you can go back to the general principle. Does it meet the general principle? I should do. That's a good point. Like, That's a good observation. Whenever you have a question of whether the details line up, yeah. go against the principle. Go against, yeah, and that works.